see pain. I think it's like art. Not any art, just the beautiful kind. <sighs> I'm not saying pain's beautiful. There's nothing good about pain that doesn't go away. What I mean, I mean, you can't put your finger on pain or beauty. I mean, you feel them. But you can't tell anybody what they're really like. You can't ever describe either of them good enough. So that means however you experience them is right. Oftentimes when you think about researching theater, you think about the play as a text independent of performance, or you think about a performance as being a part of a particular history. And I'm sort of really interested now in how the theater is all about the audience. It's about things that were cast away and hidden and tossed into the ocean and regurgitated and revealed. Stories of fights to the death, setting sail, never to return. Stories of staying fast, holding on, taking the last dance together in the setting sun of the prom. It's about love. Uh, several stories tangled up somehow. Some of them quite old, some as if they just happened, and some of them I have worked with Leslie and Helen, and I love working with them, and I completely respect their, their considerations around autobiography and autobiology, and have myself participated in that workshop. Uh, I too work with autobiography in my work. I, I work with something I call creative truth, which is a little bit of myself and a little bit of a great big lie. Now I have just like this, this immense power to do whatever I want on stage, and that was terrifying. And I wasn't really like understanding really what I should do or what 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 specific stories I should pull until I realized like these the things that have trained me right like these stories of like my home, which has just been like the the most major theme in this in this past year in this past semester in the class, um, and just learning how to talk about my home in other ways than just the form that I left with. And I, I thought that was the way it was supposed to be. Like, if you left the furniture one way, it would damage the carpet. Um, and I felt really bad for my friends whose furniture stayed in the same place, you know? And it was only, like, a couple of years ago that I realized that the reason why our furniture kept moving was because my mother was on speed for, like, most of the 80s. <laughs> Which is, oh, I'm sorry. You guys need spoons, don't you? And there's been a really interesting dialogue around autobiography, around biology, around, around work with um, bio art and with cell cultures and responsibility and ethics and ownership. I think it's brought up some really interesting debate. We had a really diverse range of student performances from the autobiology class that I think reflected a really fantastic interdisciplinary range in the work that they produced to a really professional level. I think my favorite moment in the whole of the Inside Story was probably watching our class come on and take their collective curtain call at the end of the student showcase. Yeah, I really like that. My, um, my work is personable probably because I am inspired by entertainment. And some artists aren't inspired by entertainment. But I'm inspired by entertainment and I'm particularly inspired by live television from the 50s where things often went horribly wrong. And I'm constantly trying to construct the situation where that might happen. <laughs> it gives you access to a whole other audience and demographic, I think, um, than academic papers. So being able to sort of do both of those is, is just more means of getting my points of view out into the world. So I think it's a really liberating kind of thing.